Hello there guys and welcome to this video where I'm going to be talking to you about Windows Server 2012. Okay so Windows Server 2012, this is part 2 uh, of two videos that I'm doing uh, on Windows Server 2012 and in this video we're going to be looking at the inside workings of the OS. Okay so if you haven't seen part one yet, um, please click the button below and that will send you back. So it will make much, uh, much more sense if you watch that one first. Okay, so here we are at the logon screen of Windows Server 2012. And as you can see, it is a very blank screen and in the top corner it says press control and delete to sign in. So if you press control and delete, that shows a similar looking logon screen to that of Windows 8. So if we log on using our uh, username and password, if I can spell it right that is, okay and um, we'll be greeted automatically with the Windows Server 2012 Server Manager. And from here you can see the dashboard and this is the main sort of inside working, uh, it's the replacement for the Server Manager in 2008. So this is where most people spend their time, if they want to that is. And in here it gives you a variety of things that you can do. So I was going to take you uh, through a few of those. So you can see it says configure this local server. So if we click that and we can see that it takes us to the other sort of tab on the left hand corner where it gives us our computer name, work people domain, uh, remote management, desktop, things like that, your IP address, your OS and processor, memory, all that sort of stuff. So as you can see that's just a sort of um, a reporting page which gives you information about the performance of your server, uh, different roles that are installed, okay, um, if I go back up and it gives you a a uh, set of tasks for each of the different things on your server. So, say in the events, you can say refresh the uh, events and configure event data. You can also shut down the local server. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to stop doing. I don't want to stop recording. So, if we go into here, click on all servers. Now, what you can do is, is you can actually basically like aggregate multiple multiple servers together so you can if you've got two uh, fairly decent machines lying around then you can basically aggregate them together and you can monitor them all uh, from one server manager you can use more than one uh, more than two servers so you could have four sixteen hundred thousand there probably is a limit but I'm not sure what that is okay so um, what I'm trialing at home uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be setting up with two servers just for test um, one of which will be running an Intel Xeon uh, the other one will be running a quad core Intel Core 2 quad the main server will have 8, gig 8 gigs of RAM and the secondary server will have 6 ok and they'll, they'll have identical hard disks in them so that they can replicate ok so anyway back to this we click on file and storage services we can see all the servers that we've got and if we add another one in there it just shows that as well so we can see the IP address of that whether it's online it's last update and last synchronization with the server that you're on um, best practices events and stuff like that and you, if you click onto volumes uh, when that loads you'll be able to see the different hard disks in your machine so for example, we've got the uh, Windows uh, storage boot um, petition, so you can see that's fairly full, which is okay for now. We've got the C drive, which is pretty much empty, uh, just in this test uh, machine. So we can see that it's set up on here uh, as a SAS drive. Uh, okay, so there's that. The physical disks that are connected, so SAS. It is a SAS, SATA, IDE, SCSI, whatever sort of um, 
connection type you have between your hard drive and your PC. I'm guessing that most uh, servers nowadays uh, will have SAS um, or serial, serial attached SCSI that means. Um, no one uses IDE anymore so that won't, that probably won't be uh, used much. SCSI is an option as well so if you want uh, really fast hard disks um, you can have that option. Okay, uh, the only problem with SCSI hard disks is they're not actually that big in capacity but uh, that's up to you for your own server and you can view also your storage pools okay so if we go up to the top left hand corner we click on manage and we can add roles and features okay so it says this wizard, this wizard will have you can install roles and it's a destination server which is this one and basically you select your sort of uh, role that you want so you select a server on the server pool so you select this one if you had another another server connected you can select that and it will install it straight to that other heart, that other server um, which makes it a bit more flexible and easy and you can go through here and you can install different services say file and storage web server, remote access uh, and domain services but for now I'm going to leave that blank so we're not going to install any of that you can also remove some roles and services uh, and features rather uh, basically just go through the same sort of wizard and you select which one you want to remove okay so you can add service so if you've got an active directory uh, domain you can make it search through the servers on your on your uh, forest and it will find them Okay, so we can look under DNS and you can just basically type in this server's IP address. So you just type in your, your IP address and then you can get you can get it and then say type in 2i3, we can get server 2 on my home network. So yeah, that's quite flexible. Uh, basically that that just adds it to the sort of storage pools and the servers list. So if we click on to manage again, we've got the server manager properties, we can change the uh, automatic refresh of the server manager, so that's set for 10, 10 minutes rather, and you can set it so it doesn't automatically start at logon, but we're going to leave that as default. And under tools you've got a lot of different options for computer management, uh, management. Uh, so that would include the device manager, uh, you can go to the event viewer, iSCSI, resource monitor, system information, that sort of stuff, PowerShell, you know, that, that sort, of, sort of thing. We can go to view and that will just uh, basically zoom in, in and out, which we're not going to faff about. You go to the about server manager, so you can see that's part of the server 2012 uh, OS. So if we come out of that for now, we can see the rather plain looking desktop, but that's, that's fine. So you can see we've now got a new logo for the uh, server manager. We've got the PowerShell in the taskbar and the Windows Explorer. So here we go, uh, we just see that it's basically not that much different from the desktop than Windows Server 2008 was. Um, click on the start menu, we can see that there's no Metro UI effects as such, it just sort of appears there but that's fine because servers don't do uh, graphical uh, interfaces so it just appears which is fine. Uh, and from here we've got the list to the server manager, the Windows PowerShell, computer, task manager, control panel, Internet Explorer, desktop and administrative tools. So I've shown you the server manager. Uh, Windows PowerShell is pretty sort of standard, that's been there since 2008 by default. Uh, computer, that will take us to my computer. Okay, um, also we've got task manager, so we've got a fairly basic task manager unless you want to expand it and you can get performance information. Okay, so that's this test system. We've got two i7s uh, on this virtual machine. Memory, 8 gig for, for test. Okay, so if we go back to the start menu, we've got control panel. That's pretty standard again. If we go to the system information, we can see that this is server 2012 data center. We've got the logo there. Uh, we're not activated as of yet, but um, obviously that's your job to go and activate it. So we've got a 64-bit processor, 
the Agnix RAM. Okay, so if we pop back, Internet Explorer, we don't have that based in the Metro UI, but we do have Internet Explorer 10 uh, installed on the OS, so that's pretty good. We've got the Internet Explorer enhanced security configuration rubbish that just gets on everyone's tits. So we can just disable that by going, in, going into the server manager. But for now, I'm going to leave that as default. We go to desktop, and we've got administrative tools where we can go into the different options: iSCSI, computer management, management, PowerShell, server backup. So we can go to device manager, see that everything's happy in there, apart from the graphics because it's an arse. Uh, processors, uh, disk management. Uh, see all that. So obviously we can still have uh, software software based RAID. But obviously you want to really really be going with hardware based RAID. So you can use the Intel uh, rapid storage technology because that's really the best option, unless you're going for an Adaptec RAID card. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's my overview of Windows Server 2012. Uh, please comment. Um, I want to hear from you um, whether you would um, have your own server at home. Uh, do you like Windows Server 2012? Would you install it on your own server? Or would you like to see it on any enterprise level uh, servers anywhere? Um, yeah, please uh, don't forget to check, my, check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash Ben's Tech Tips. And don't forget to subscribe to Ben's Tech Tips for more computer videos.